Welcome, gentlemen, women, and dino lovers all around. It's time to cover each dino in ARC. Well, at least as many as we can fit into the video. Hey, Smooth, how many dinos are there in this game? Uh, 480 dinos, and we're not even halfway. Oh, may our Lord and Savior, Raptor Jesus, protect us. <laughs> not a micro raptor or the over raptor, this is the baseline, the start of it all, one of the biggest annoyances to a starting player, and everyone who has played Ark for a prolonged amount of time remembers encountering these things. You're going on the beach, building your thatch hut, or just starting in general, you hear the sound of rapid footsteps, and it's one of two things almost every time, a saber tooth or a raptor. And there's usually the raptors come in packs. They're very similar threats, and uh, you know they're both faster than you and will absolutely decimate you if you don't have a bola or spear. But what what sets the raptor apart is that it can pounce on you, pinning you to the ground and knocking you off small and medium tames while ripping your throat out. There's not much reason for it. We can tame these things by knocking them out and feeding them meat. They're basically the carnivorous horse of the dino world fastest but still very fast, and boasts in a pack boost of the four. It's a team that can very easily get high and tight in, though it cannot swim very well. It has a very low health and torpor pool, making it so it's more of a mobility team than a fighting one, unless you're going after fodder or other unarmed survivors. The Raptor is one of those few dinos to have also an alpha variant. The awful combination of a pissed off bat and a feral wolf. Raptors, hunting packs patrolling around the night waiting for easy prey to come along. Not only do they hold the typical abilities of your average dire wolf or saber tooth, they also have extra mobility options including riding zip lines. Depending on what map you're on, make them much more harder to escape. They are all around decent type of tame. Good speed, good damage, and weight reduction with most materials like wood, stone, and crystal. The Ravager reduces weight by 50%. Now, they'll never be your go-to tame when it comes to the late game, but with early and middle, the Ravager has your back. It's best to bola them and fill them with arrows. But keep in mind, they're uh, not available on most maps, and uh, they're not useful on most maps that don't have a zip line. And as far as I can tell, uh, only when it's wild, it will have a terrifying bleed attack. What do you mean bleed attack? It bites things just like everything else. They all bite. What makes this thing different? The second slightly lesser but still extremely annoying early game dino, the Sabertooth. Boasting speeds much higher than any new player will ever have, you'll hear this thing let out a small growl and chase you down when you enter its aggro range of anywhere within 30 yards of it. Without a bola and a club or a good enough spear, there's not much chance you have against fighting this thing at your starting level. It's just an awful creature. It's not even good tame this damn kitty cat. They didn't give any cool abilities or anything. It's just a large cat that you need to knock out and feed meat to. It's not the biggest cat in the game. There are two larger cats. The only reason why you'd ever team a saber tooth is if you didn't know much about the game or you're trying to do a challenge run. There are a million better alternatives. Typically, unless the saber tooth is the only thing around and you need some quick, easy hide, meat, or polymer, because it's pretty good at gathering each of those. <laughs> Tapihara, not the fastest, but definitely the most mobile of all the flyers. Moving around, up, down, and side to side with precision, they're even able to latch onto walls. The Tapihara may be one of the harder tames to get in the game, but it is worth it, beating out most flyers in pure versatility. The Tapihara is one of the most cowardly dinos in the game. Not even letting you get close before instantly flying high into the sky with its large amount of stamina. If you can't catch it, it probably won't be landing anytime soon. It boasts a unique saddle, the Tech Saddle, which only a few dinos in the game have. It boasts two seats and multiple guns. When you have element, you are able to shoot large balls of plasma dealing massive damage to players and dinos. With Tapahor's nature, typically the way you have to tame this thing is by hitting it with a bolo from long range or chasing it to a trap. It's a knockout tame that eats meat. Despite any headaches you might have once you tame it, it can be used for nearly anything, as a battle mount or merely for transportation. 
This is as common as the raptor or the saber tooth, but even more brutal. The terror bird, twice as fast as a player, and when it reaches you, it'll peck you to death while running circles around you, taunting you while you miss your melee or ranged attacks. Even jumping off a cliff won't save you from these birds as they can glide. The only way to survive escaping from them is going into the water. Annoyingly, they don't care just about survivor flesh, though they do prefer it. They will kill almost any other creature in the area, sleeping or not. These demons with their baby wings are aptly named as the Dubrin Terror, Terror Birds. While acting similar to raptors having higher melee damage, if you like to tame one, you would have to knock them out and feed them meat. When used for pure mobility, this is one of the fastest small teams you can get, and if jumping off a cliff or a mountain, you can cover massive distances at a small amount of time, and you can hold their own in a decent amount of fights. Typically, terror birds should only be fought when you have good gear or large teams, as most mid-game teams should be able to handle a group of terror birds. Outside of the entry, later in the series, this is the Bane of the Redwoods, making walking around at night a dance with the devil in the moonlight. These creatures' eyes glow to alert you of its presence, but by the time you notice, it may already be too late. The Chudon, a raptor-like creature that only comes up to your knee, and is usually passive and frightened in the daytime. When it turns night, it will bite you. Its mouth is laced with a virulent toxin that's like eating 200 melanin gummies and drinking 2 gallons of nighttime Benadryl. Whether you're faster than them or not, a few bites is all it needs before sleepy time. The Devil of the Woods. To tame this thing is one of the most unique ways. You'll need a blood sacrifice. That's right, you'll have to throw your hard-earned tames into the claws of this knee-high demon that has almost no purpose to tame. Low health, low damage, and no bitches. This is similar to the Compi, a meme dino, used to knock out unaware survivors and teabag them while they take a very long nap. Here we have a complete ripoff of the Sea Glider from Sonatica with a slight upgrade. This extremely skittish creature has nearly no survivability in the water or on land, but has evolved some amazing lungs, allowing it to stay submerged for an extremely long time and somehow have you breathe underwater along with it. I guess they just ooze oxygen, letting you stay underwater for as long as you're riding. And just like the Sea Glider, you can only ride this creature underwater. On land, you can't even touch it. They will typically feed on trebolites and are given massive damage multipliers when attacking them. The main upside of these creatures is allowing you to gather underwater resources that would otherwise be unattainable and unreachable. Generic as white toast bread with a fucking bread. The giant fucking dog, you already knows what it does except like one thing. It goes a woo and has a pack bonus as long as its friends are nearby. The pack bonus goes to a maximum of 4, each wolf receiving a 5% damage boost from another member of the pack. And when the leader uses his wolf ability for 90 seconds, all members of the pack receive a 50% damage boost and 25% damage reduction. It's a knockout tan that really likes to eat mutton, so its crippling weakness is that it lacks a saddle, making an easy target. But since it's a giant fucking dog, it can run fast and get away from most things in the game. Now it's one game breaking ability. You can see how hurt you are and if you are dead nearby. <laughs> Moving on to the Fenrir. Oh shit, is that a slightly bigger dog that you have to kill a boss for? It can have ice armor that reflects some damage and buffs nearby dire wolves. I want to note though, they cannot be bred, so they have a very strict upper limit. But what they lack in armor and stats, they can be replaced with unique abilities like having pack tactics and have a thing called ice bite which unbelievably slows down enemies a little bit and does less damage. When howling, it activates its frigid armor that constantly drains stamina but increases damage reflection. And it becomes immune to freezing and slowing. If you want to be honest, its main use is a living fridge despite being able to let direwolves get up to a 100% damage boost. Unless you have a male and female Fenrir, and you've tamed about 30 additional wolves, this thing is next to useless. May I also add that a bred enough dire wolf will do more damage than this, this traitor of a boss. It really is the manifestation of getting a boss weapon after killing them. Okay, so, community fell, alright? Because we thought we can get unlimited power for free. 
This power starts corrupting our world and forces to evacuate to the stars. This fucking creature eats it! The Ferox, your favorite element fiend. A teddy bear with four arms and rippling muscles. If you want to tame it, you have to feed it element. There's a 20% chance when you approach it, it will transform and switch both your colon and your esophagus. This also might happen when you feed it element when it's passive. It can be killed by almost anything in the game. After you feed it though, uh, or get unlucky, you have a rather tough time putting this thing down. When in aggressive mode, it will crawl drupal in size and make the rock look like a golem. You have to do this multiple times, dodging its aggressive form. After a certain period of time, it will revert back to its passive form, allowing you to feed it. Keep in mind, the more you feed it, the higher its addiction meter will increase. The higher the meter, the higher the damage and damage reduction. However, also means it will spend less time transformed. Each element increases that by about 5%, but this will decay in time. Female Theroxes, for some reason, will only breed when they're about to OD on meth. They need to be about 90% addiction before they'll take dick. Male ones don't need any when tame. Theroxes, when in their passive state, dig up element dust for you. And in their enraged state, they have many different attacks they can use. One of them being a ground slam that prevents creatures from flying or running away from you. Another one is Boulder Throw, where it's self-explanatory. It chucks a large rock at you that it rips from the ground. It also can climb most surfaces and has a charge jump. Whether it be passive or aggressive mode, whether you're riding it or it's riding you, the Ferox will give you hypothermic protection. It's also an amazing raiding tame and good at killing bosses as it has excellent melee damage and a ranged option. Fjord! 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 Taming this bird is surprisingly easy. It basically just follows you around and eats whatever you kill until it decides that you're best friends. It's not strong, and it's only decently fast, and on top of that only has one skill. But that's a good ass skill that it has that can have it be one of your mainstay tames all on its own. When a player dies, the Fjord nearby, if it doesn't get sniped of course, or eaten, will grab your death bag and fly into the clouds and bring it to your new spawn location. Insurance baby! You can also find nearby injured creatures, which is good if you're trying to tame or kill something that is rather fast. Get a Pithecus. Now we get into a Sasquatch that's in the butt stuff. The only way to tame this creature is to put on a ghillie suit, crouch them preferably behind them, and show some berries up their ass without them noticing. If it does notice you, it immediately go into attack as they are very territorial. Which let me tell ya. If you would like to tame a max level one, you better get a cage, cause you have to follow it around for about 36 minutes. I definitely recommend trapping them, cause they'll turn around and move in different directions just to fuck with you. But the Gigapithecus is rather fast, and has some decent damage. It's even able to punch through player armor. But keep in mind it loses most fights to anything significant. It's also a herbivore though, so you should probably just stick around to eating berries and running through the woods. It's only other abilities that is able to throw the player in any shoulder mount a ludicrous distance. We'll get you radical and gnarly airtime. Dinos, deer, and creatures of the night, I bid you death by 18 wheeler and hope you enjoyed tonight's scheduled program. I bid you adieu.